Today, we'll recap Silo, a post-apocalyptic science fiction series. Subscribe and hit like before we begin. Silo starts with a man named Holston putting on his sheriff badge and getting ready in his room. What he's going to do is a big deal, and it's going to change things for everyone. He steps out into a huge base where lots of people are living. Silo is a story set in a future world after everything went wrong. People now live in a big underground silo, and they're not allowed to go outside into the ruined and dangerous world. They don't know anything about what happened before they were in the silo. How did things get this way? And why can't they explore the outside world? What happened to Earth to make it like this? The answers are hidden inside the silo. No one really knows who built the silo, but they do know it's meant to keep the people safe and sound inside, away from the outside world that's now dangerous and ruined. Holston goes to his office and starts writing something on paper. He places his badge down. He walks out of the office and his co-worker greets him. Holston instructs him to meet at Holding 3. Heading into Holding 3, Sheriff Holston peers out of the window. He locks the door and tosses the keys outside. Sam notices Holston gazing at the wasteland on the screen. A devastated landscape unfolds before him, alongside a lifeless body. Before Sam can intervene, Holston breaks the cardinal rule of the silo. He declares his wish to go out. In the silo, once this request is made, it must be granted, and it's irreversible. We then shift back in time to witness Holston alongside his partner, Allison. After receiving clearance, Allison and Holston are approved for childbearing for a year. Their relief is palpable, and their joy knows no bounds. Their family is on the verge of being whole. As they enjoy breakfast at the cafeteria, it's evident that those around them are aware of their impending parenthood and share in their happiness. At this moment, an elderly woman named Gloria approaches them. Despite Holston's distaste, she addresses Allison, informing her that she provides fertility counseling, which could be beneficial. Holston doesn't like Gloria for some reason and would rather have her leave his wife alone. So, Gloria goes away. Holston tells Allison that Gloria is a liar. Later, Allison gets her birth control pill, which is more like a small metal device taken out by Dr. Leonard. She is finally ready to have a baby. Days go by. Allison is in her IT office with her friend Karen. Their boss Bernard comes and says he took down her article on getting back deleted files. She needs his OK before posting such articles. Later, Allison questions Holston about why it's forbidden to question history if rebels erased it. She wonders why they can't explore the mines for remaining relics if they lament their lost past. Holston explains the pact is the only history, and seeking outside knowledge risks everyone's death. Holston's duty is preventing any escape. Allison questions who these rebels are. Where are these relic-containing mines? Silo's Freedom Day approaches. The days to bear a child is down to 157, yet Allison isn't pregnant. Gloria takes her home, pondering if rebels erased history or others did. She wonders if these same forces prevent her from having a child. Allison shares this with Holston, who dismisses Gloria's idea as crazy. He assures her they must stay positive about their pregnancy clearance. Freedom Day arrives. Holston finds himself in the company of Mayor Ruth Johns, who is prepared to deliver a speech commemorating this significant occasion. Meanwhile, Allison is tasked with visiting a man named George Wilkins, who has once again reached out to her company for assistance with his malfunctioning machine. Arriving at George's residence, he unveils an ancient hard drive, deemed a relic according to the judicial system's perspective on her expertise in data recovery. Despite its seemingly blank appearance, the hard drive's memory is nearly at full capacity, suggesting the presence of concealed information. George also reveals that this hard drive dates back more than 140 years, signifying its origin before the rebellion that ultimately resulted in the eradication of historical records. Allison dedicates considerable time to uncovering the drive's contents. Finally, she cracks it using a code engraved on the drive itself. Among the data, she discovers a wealth of information about the silo, including its blueprints. Recognizing the potential danger, considering the authorities' reaction, Allison warns George that he could be in serious trouble if they find out. They might even banish him to the wasteland. Urging him to dispose of the drive immediately, she departs. However, George continues his investigation into the silo's blueprints and stumbles upon a concealed tunnel on the lower level, isolated from the upper levels by a sturdy layer of concrete. 
The details are labeled as classified. The following day, she confides in Karen about not feeling well and uses it as an excuse to visit Gloria and gain insights from her. Returning home, she informs Holston that she plans to take the next day off to go to the market. Holston, meanwhile, is preoccupied with thoughts about his wife and her well-being. The following day, Allison meets with George again to delve further into the silo's mysteries through the drive's content. They sift through a plethora of information until they stumble upon the last file, leaving Allison utterly astonished. This file reveals footage of lush green trees, clear blue skies, and objects soaring in the air. That night, Allison comes back home and goes to sleep without engaging in much conversation with Holston. Allison's days of bearing children have come to an end. Holston and Dr. Leonard wait for her at their appointed meeting place, expecting her to arrive from work. However, after waiting for a considerable period, Holston decides to check her office and discovers that she has called in sick. Returning home, he is shocked to find Allison in a distressed and bloody condition. She reveals to him the birth control pill that she has just removed from her abdomen, exposing the fact that what Dr. Leonard did a year ago was a deception. This revelation suggests that the enforcers of the pact, which established the silo's existence, don't want people to have children, aiming to ensure compliance and obedience from the population. Holston quickly fetches Dr. Leonard, and as they make their way back, he unexpectedly encounters Sam. Sam informs Holston that Allison is in the cafeteria. Hurrying to the cafeteria, Holston discovers Allison passionately attempting to reveal to the crowd how those in power are deceiving them. Despite the breathtaking world that exists beyond, the authorities are keeping everyone confined. Before Holston can soothe her, Allison boldly declares her desire to go outside. Sam restrains her with handcuffs and escorts her to a holding facility. Allison's aspiration, though a profound desire, is treated as a transgression within the confines of the silo. Her wish must be fulfilled, even though it appears as if she has committed a crime against the establishment and violated its regulations. Both Gloria and George undergo questioning, but their accounts yield no significant information. The search at George's residence yields no results. He likely concealed the drive in a secure location. Holston visits Allison in her confinement. She shares her belief that the screens in the silo only display what the enforcers want the populace to witness. If the residents remain uninformed, they won't be inclined to inquire. Allison is determined to uncover the truth beyond the silo and assures Holston that she will return for him once she has achieved that goal. Holston is consumed by worry. As the moment arrives, Allison dons a suit and helmet, surrounded by her husband Holston, Mayor Ruth Johns, and Sam. Beyond the airlock, she is no longer bound by Silo's rules. With tear-filled eyes, Holston recites the oath to Allison. Her final words, I love you, resonate in the air as she steps into the wasteland. Inside the Silo, cheers erupt as people watch Allison's emergence on the large cafeteria screen, marking her journey to the other side. Tears stream down Holston's face as he watches his wife walk away from the silo, only to collapse on the ground. Allison's life comes to a tragic end. Mayor Johns and Sam are overwhelmed by grief. George emerges from the cafeteria, his expression heavy with sadness, joined by the somber crowd of onlookers. Allison's death leaves a profound impact. Two years pass, Holston finds himself in his office when Sam enters, bearing somber news. George Wilkins has been discovered deceased on level 120. However, an engineer from that level believes George's demise was not natural. Upon investigating George's body the following day, located on level 120, Holston and Sam discover a wound on his head. Strangely, the engineer who had initially raised suspicions about George's death is nowhere to be found. Hank, the individual from the sheriff's department who had presented George's body to Holston and Sam, guides them to the engineer who initially voiced concerns about George's passing. This engineer, named Juliet Nichols, is stationed deeper within the generator room. Within holding three, Holston engages in conversation with Sam. Pulling up a chair, Holston expresses his determination to venture outside, even if it means confronting the possibility that Allison, who had been presumed dead for over two years, might be out there. Holston is resolved to uncover the truth that Allison had been pursuing. Numerous questions arise. Who are the enforcers? What is the pact exactly? Where is the mine mentioned by Allison, said to house remnants of the past? What destination does the tunnel beneath the silo lead to? 
who was behind George's demise. Could this be a signal that someone is intent on concealing what lies beyond the silo? What vital information did Juliet share with Hulston that ultimately motivated him to embark on the same quest for truth that drove Alison? Mayor Ruth Johns stands before Holston and recites the oath just before he steps outside the confines of the silo. Meanwhile, two individuals adjust their helmets in preparation, while Deputy Sam Mons, his demeanor filled with sorrow, operates the airlock. With a heavy heart, he bids his close friend a poignant farewell. As the hatches part, sunlight and dust cascade onto Sheriff Holston Becker's countenance. Among the onlookers, Juliet Nichols and others observe virus screen as Holston steps onto the desolate wasteland. Holston's gaze sweeps across the expanse, capturing the vivid azure sky, the flourishing foliage, and the avian inhabitants soaring overhead. Allison's revelations were accurate. The populace deserves to witness the concealed reality that Silo has concealed from them. Stepping toward the camera transmitting this vision to countless screens, he wipes clean the lens, his resolve steadfast. Then, with determined steps, he moves toward the inert form of Allison. Yet, as he draws near, a sudden poison courses through him, overwhelming his senses. Struggling for breath, Holston rests off his helmet in a desperate bid for air. His strength falters, and he crumples, managing to pull himself beside Allison before succumbing to the poison's grip. Thus, Holston's final moments align him once more with his beloved wife. Meanwhile, Juliet's frustration burgeons, and she descends into the generator chamber, unleashing her frustration in piercing screams. A sense of futility engulfs her, as all her efforts seem to unravel in the face of this tragic outcome. What a sad ending. What are the secrets of the silo? Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.